listening to Saturday with Ted on News Talk 1010. Welcome back to the program at 1136 at News Talk 1010. I'm thrilled to have um, our first guest in, in studio with me come on the program. We, I don't think we've ever met, and if we did, it was a brief uh, how you doing handshake or something uh, over one of the awards one of us won. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. awards. Yeah. That, there's yeah. always that. You know, our our you know rich that? career in, in yeah. awards. <laughs> you, you know, I'm lying already. Uh, you remember him from Street, uh, street Legal, Corner Gas, and, um, God, 52 movie and television television productions in total. He is starring in Seeds at the Crows Theatre here in Toronto, and I speak of uh, Eric Peterson. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, too. I just said something to you off here, and i got to repeat it here. I did not, not know that your wife was uh, was Annie Kidder. Annie Kidder is my beautiful and wonderful wife. She's a real person. She's out in the real world doing real things. I am, but uh, <laughs> I'll, you know, I'll do, I'll pretend for money. <laughs> she is the executive director for... Uh, People for Education. And we, I've probably chatted with her a half dozen times. You know, she's been on this, uh, on this oh, yeah. uh, news radio uh, yeah. often. Absolutely. Uh, so how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm. Uh, this is a wonderful play I'm in. It's. Uh, it's. It's actually playing down at the Ford's. I mean, at the uh, Young Center, in the Distillery District, uh, the Soul Pepper. Uh, it's at their installation there. Uh, it's a documentary theater piece. Uh, it's basically the story is Percy Schmeiser, the 1998 yeah. uh, farmer that was sued by Monsanto for uh, a breach of. Uh, patent on his seeds mm -hmm. and he was found uh, guilty of that and then became a world uh, kind of figure and in, in the you know anti GMO kind of lobby groups that are, are he was around. kind of our, our uh, version of uh, Aaron Brockovich in a way, he, he huh? is kind of he wasn't as beautiful as that nor <laughs> am I as who played it on the in that movie wasn't that that Julie no um, Julia uh, Roberts uh, yes. Julia Roberts good yes. for you I can't remember names anymore the wife and I are always going you know remember mm -hmm. what you know yeah and in, in it was in something like that yeah yeah I know what you mean you know no there's no kind of proper noun or name goes uh, watch him call it becomes a very popular uh, uh, watch him call it yeah but we seem yeah. to be able to communicate so so, so, so he, so he takes on uh, Monsanto, which is a difficult thing to do to begin with, because they got more money than God. Yeah, they do. And, and, and well, if you're going to own the food. Yeah. yeah, you were a license to print money. No, it was. It was a very, and I think it's a surprising cultural change for him. He he argued his his whole point became that it's again, it, you know, it it's a patent law versus uh, farmers' rights, and so these seeds blow onto his land. He's not, this is 1997, 98, the, the GMO uh, canola had only been introduced in 1996 in, in that part of Saskatchewan, and they, there was a poor understanding of how this was actually working. He feels the plants are his, because they're on his land, and normally the rest of us would agree with him, I would think, that, uh, you know, that it was, but it ends up that the patent in the gene inside the seed actually had preference and uh, domination over his rights as a landowner mm -hmm. and the owner of this plant. Uh, he went then five years. He was He's a tough guy. You know, he wasn't about to take this in any, any way, shape, or form. So he and his wife also, who was very Louise, was they were tremendous partners, these two. Uh, they eventually went to the Supreme Court with it about five years later. And again, he was still found, uh, it was a 4-5 decision in favor of Monsanto. But he paid no damages. They came to uh, realize that this was um, probably a law that maybe should be re-looked at again mm -hmm. in, 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 in Parliament because it did pose some very serious questions as to well, and during uh, the course of this, did, did Monsanto at any point say, well, you know, we really got to uh, maybe sort of back off a little bit here because uh, this is, it's bad for our image. We're, we're not, we're I don't think they worried the about that. Really Their care. image they wanted to, they seem to have been a very hard-nosed kind of business practice. They were actually, and you can document this easily by going on to the internet. A lot of farmers were actually threatened by them. So they said, we, you have this seed on here, if, unless you start paying us $15 an acre. Uh, per year on this, we're going to take you to court like we did Percy. They wanted to make sure that people understood that there had been a, 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 a law and cultural shift in this manner and that and the law did support them in this. Uh, what is so strange to, to me doing this was that the that uh, there was so this has been so poorly communicated to the rest of the country and the government was in on this. I mean Percy also said you know the, the federal government helped Monsanto and these big agro companies develop these these new genetically modified uh, organisms, mm -hmm. and yet there was very little information about it. And even today we can't even label. Uh, GMOs because that lobby is so powerful that as Canadian citizens you can't 
we can't be told if we're uh, eating it or not. So what, well, what makes this canola different from the stuff that's been growing out west for years? Well, Which originally the, well, was called rapeseed, right? It was really a rape, but rape was an industrial oil, and it wasn't until they discovered how to make rape an edible oil, then they changed the name canola, which is evidently it's a cross between uh, Canada and granola. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, you know, so that's how they arrived. The marketers arrived. Are you serious? They, yeah, no, I, I think that's where I read that someplace. Well, what happens is they, they I mean, basically Monsanto is a chemical company, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. DuPont and all these people there. So they had Roundup Ready, which is their uh, in, uh, herbicide. So what they did was they, by putting this gene in, meant that this canola, this canola was resistant to this herbicide. So that meant you could just spray the whole field, everything else would die but the canola. Wow. Um, and in, when they introduced it, they said it wouldn't spread, it would not, in, you know, because Percy himself was, he was farming for 50 years, farming rape or canola as we want to call it now. In that area, he was a seed saver, that is, he kept seed from his own crop that uh, for the next year to seed, and therefore was developing for his own reasons, as farmers do all over the world, and have for ever since there's been farmers, developing a seed and a plant <coughs> that would be specifically suited uh, disease-wise and soil-wise and uh, weather-wise mm -hmm. to w his actual location. That whole, all, his 50 years of developing his own canola in that sense then is contaminated by this gene because the gene they put in to be resistant to this herbicide, I know the science, I mean, I, I can't believe that I'm talking so much about science <laughs> here, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, so uh, that is a dominant gene. It would immediately, and so they've cross-pollinated, and now you virtually can't, there is no canola on the prairies that isn't contaminated by this now, so this, this gene, which is another downside of it, uh, of, of this genetically modified organisms. And the other ha hand is there's been no testing actually done in this, in North America at any rate, as to the long-term effects of these things. Mm -hmm. In Europe, there's, and in Japan and other countries, uh, there has been more testing and there has been, like you can't sell Canadian canola to uh, to the EU, it's banned there. So it hasn't worked out. The it's prom banned because it hasn't been tested? It's banned because it's got genetically modified. And they don't, until they're, they've, and it was consumer groups actually, the, not the, the you know, governments there, it was consumer groups in, in Europe that stopped uh, the, the use of it. It, it, they, you have to label it, and you can't buy it. Japan, and they want it. You know, they want the alfalfa. They want. Uh, I mean, they're, these these companies are developing alfalfa, wheat, and it's it is really um, it is it's questionable kind of. I think at the moment the politics of it and the cultural and economic issues become, especially in a globalized world. If you've got parts of the world saying we're not going to have this stuff in here at this point, at any rate. I mean, uh, for for the Saskatchewan canola farmer, they lost uh, you know a third of the markets with Europe and prices dropped. So, the promises of the glory of yeah. this new thing have not actually come true. No. And you are dealing with very big entities, very powerful entities, as you were saying about Monsanto. That's a very big, powerful, rich company, and uh, and they're pitted against well uh, our. Our farmer. Yeah, okay. Well, a lot of farmers buy it too and are into the system. I'm not saying that. No, 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 for sure. But it's a very interesting documentary play. Everything is verbatim in it. And it's, uh, it's been wonderfully staged by uh, Chris Abraham, who directed it. And a wonderful script by Annabelle Souture from Quebec, and she's she's the one that has spent all this time uh, in the pro uh, investigating the problem. It's a fairly balanced, I'm saying fairly balanced picture of it. I think they that the, the you're saying fairly as in reasonably balanced or fairly as in fair balanced. Uh, reasonably balanced. Okay. I think I, you know I, I don't know if we have fair anymore. I, you know everything is spin these days. My God, you've got to kind of grind your own axe. Nobody else is, eh? Uh, Eric Peterson. <laughs> our guest in studio. You're from Indian Head, Saskatchewan. I want to find out more about that when we come right back. 1140.